it's time now for some real education. You wait for this every, every day, don't you, where we put away the foolishness of the public schools and universities and try to focus on a serious educational issue. Today, I want to talk to you about Bernini. Take a picture, look at the picture. Bernini, there he is on the left, was an Italian sculptor and architect, a major figure in architecture as well. He was better known as the leading sculptor of his age. Born in 1598, he lived all the way to 1680. He is a great late Renaissance Baroque painter. In fact, he created Baroque art and architecture. According to one critic, what, is, what Shakespeare is to drama, Bernini may be to sculpture. Bernini was also an accomplished painter and a man of the theater who wrote and directed plays. As an architect and a city planner, he designed churches and chapels and public squares, as well as massive works combining both architecture and sculpture, especially elaborate public fountains and funerary monuments. His ability to synthesize sculpture, painting, and architecture into a coherent conceptual visual whole has been termed by the art historian Irvin Lavin as the unity of the visual arts. Now take a look at our picture for today. This is the story of Aeneas and Caesus and Aeneas and Caesis and Ascanius. This is, of course, from the great Roman poet Virgil, who gave us the Aeneid, the story of how Aeneas, the hero, fled from the burning Troy by taking his aged father on his shoulder. And you can see his little boy behind him. So the father is Anchises on the shoulders of Aeneas, and that's little Ascanius fleeing behind him. And they're running away from the destruction of the Trojan world. Aeneas would be like Odysseus, buffeted around, buffeted around the Mediterranean, took years and years and years of sorrow and tragedy before he could get to his destiny. Unlike Odysseus, whose destiny was to return home a hero, it was the destiny of Aeneas to raise out of the fallen Trojan race a new race, and that race would be the race of the Romans. And so take a look at the next image there, the face, the, how, how just what an what a incredibly soft touch he had with that hammer and that, uh, that's those sculpting tools uh, in terms of making the face of Aeneas. Uh, Aeneas and Caesis and Ascanius was sculpted in 1619. Today it is housed in the Galleria Borghese in Rome. The sculpture depicts a scene from the Aeneid. And go back to the broader view. It goes back to the Aeneid, where the hero Aeneas leads his family from the burning Troy. The life-size group shows the three generations of his family. Young, Aene the young man is Aeneas, carrying his father. His son is there. Aeneas is also the, a demigod. He's, his mother was no less a goddess than Venus, Aphrodite, the goddess of love. And that is alluded to by the lion skin in which is draped around his body. A lion skin com commonly stands in Greek mythology for power and is often related to Hercules, a descendant of Zeus. Behind that, you have Ascanius. The statue was made by Bernini when he was 20 years old. Let me repeat. When you were getting drunk in your dorm and sleeping through your classrooms, your 8 o'clock sociology classes, Bernini was sculpting this at age 20. Pretty amazing.